how we let that set. Hello there, people of the internet. We have construction in the background. I apologize for that, but there's nothing I can do about it. So, right here on the table, I have my Sporterized Car 98. This right here is a 1944 production Car 98. There's nothing overly special about this one other than the fact that it's a Car 98. Uh, but it's in a sporterized rifle stock, and I mean, it does what I want it to. It locks 8mm Mauser lead down range. But I have this thing taken apart because a friend of mine has recently given me, given me something pretty damn special. So this thing is taken apart because I used the parts from this uh, Car 98 to get this other one up and going. This right here is a legitimate military pattern Car 98. This is one of their early production rifles. We'll go ahead and we'll talk about uh, all of the different features of this rifle uh, here in a second. But now, whenever I'd been given this, it was just, you know, a partial rifle. Um, <laughs> I took the, uh, the magazine floor plate and the trigger guard off of uh, my sporterized Car 98, and I took the ejector and bolt stop right here off of the sporterized car 98 i do have additional things coming so i will be able to make two legitimate complete uh car 98 rifles but i wanted to go ahead and work on this thing not only that but the things i have coming are not german produced so i wanted to go ahead and get this car 98 100 percent uh, legitimate Car 98 parts, whereas the Sporterized one can be a mishmash of anything. So for now, my Sporterized Car 98 has been a parts rifle, but I do have the parts coming. They're on their way. Uh, should be here, I don't know, a couple of weeks if I had to make any guesstimations. Uh, and they all have two working 8mm Mausers. Now, whenever I had gotten this thing, this thing was in incredibly rough shape. It took me like two days just to even know if this rifle was going to be even remotely salvageable. The bolt was frozen so heavily, and I, I believed that there was some sort of internal damage. I had to bash this thing open basically with a hammer, and I was convinced that the bolt was not going to be savable. Now, technically speaking, the bolt is incomplete. We are missing our safety on the back, but that will not hindrance uh, the functionality of the actual firing mechanics of this rifle. Though I do have a safety coming, so I will be able to uh, cram a safety on this thing. It is an actual Car 98 safety. It's German produced, uh, time period correct, so I won't have to worry about anything non-German being on this rifle. But the bolt was so seized up, I had to bash it open with a hammer. And there was obviously some sort of internal issue because anyone who knows anything about the Mauser action knows that it's a cock on open action. Well, whenever I had opened it, the uh, bolt was still uncocked. And mind you, this right here, I should have, I really should have recorded just how much work I put into this bolt because I could not even do this whenever I first got this thing. We're talking, this thing was a ball of rust seized up. And the fact that I'm able to do what I'm doing with it right now is absolutely amazing. It still is a very, very rusty rifle. The only things I did to it were make it complete to see if it was going to be even remotely salvageable. Uh, I broke the bolt free and the entire barrel was clogged with crap. Uh, it looked like somebody had crammed a bunch of pencils down the barrel and a bunch of dirt. I have no idea what the story is behind that, but there was a bunch of pencils and a bunch of dirt <laughs> down this barrel. Now, I believe that actually preserved the barrel because the rifling in the barrel is... It is uncomfortable how good the rifling is in this barrel. I'll go ahead and throw up some photos of that at some point in time. But whenever I was looking at this rifle, I was looking it over, trying to determine whether or not it would be salvageable. The stock does have some cracks in it. I'm going to need to uh, do some stock repair on this thing before I decide to take it out to the range. Every square inch of this rifle is absolutely rusted to hell. This thing has definitely seen better days, but this rifle, if I had to make a guess, I'd say the pencils down the barrel uh, were to like makeshift disable it. It was probably used as decoration or a wall hanger at one point or another. But the bolt, I managed to get working. 
Um, it took some finagling, took some finesse, took a lot of cleaning, a lot of scrubbing, a lot of wire brushing, but I managed to get the bolt actually, actually functional. Uh, the trigger itself does work. I'm going to dry fire the rifle. A lot of people don't like that, but this is a center fire rifle. All right. So everything on the rifle seems to at least be functional. Uh, the barrel, I'm still in the process of cleaning, but there are, there is still some crap built up. Uh, I can't get over just how smooth this bolt has gotten. They don't make them like they used to, that's for sure. But there's still some crap in the rifling in the barrel. I don't want to pull the trigger until I get all that out. And I want to take care of the stock as well. Uh, we have a few little cracks uh, along the stock. But besides that, I think the stock is going to be salvageable. I have brought worse stocks back to life. I'm also going to hydrate the stock because it feels incredibly dry. And I feel like shooting this thing would crack the stock pretty damn quick. Okay. Now, let's talk about some of the different features about this Car 98. I have an early production Car 98 here. Well, early war Car 98. And I have a mid-war Car 98. We're going to go ahead and compare the two. I don't have the stock for the mid-war Car 98, but that's okay. Because the stock on the early war Car 98 is actually from a mid-war Car 98. So I'll show you guys what that right there is actually supposed to look like. Now we're gonna have a mic change and a camera change because I'm gonna swap over to my camera phone because the camera I'm currently recording on does not have a screen on it. So I will not be able to tell if I am actually showing you guys what's going on. So I'm going to swap over to my camera phone which actually does have a screen on it and it should get the job done. So we're gonna swap over to that and I will show you guys some of the different uh, things to look at for these two rifles. All right, first off, forgive the mess. This is a work table, so that is why it's so messy. <laughs> and there's the camera I'm using. It's a GoPro, no screen on it, so that's why I swapped over this camera. All right, let's give this a couple of looks here. We're going to go ahead and start off. We're going to start off with the stock because I want to show what uh, this rifle is not, and then I will show what this rifle is. This rifle is not a mid war rifle. The stock has obviously been replaced with a mid-war rifle. And I will show you guys exactly how I'm able to tell that. Let me grab my trusty light here. Perfect. If you look at the creases of the stock, you can actually see how the stock is made out of laminate wood. That is something that was done midway through the war. Original Car 98 stocks, one that this barrel and receiver would have been inside of, that would have been made of walnut. That would have been one solid piece and not the laminate stock that we see here. The upper handguard is also a different color than the uh, bottom stock, so that right there tells me that this right here is just a thrown together rifle. Now, although the stock itself is uh, a mid-war rifle, this right here is another indication. I don't have one on here, I have one coming. But the style of butt pad that these rifles take, the original style of butt pad that the uh, newer or I guess the older model, the, the, the earlier pattern of rifle of the Car 98 would have been just flat, whereas uh, later on they adopted more of a, <laughs> I guess more of a, a cup style butt, butt pad that goes onto the end of the rifle. So I do have one of these coming, and uh, unfortunately the butt pad on the Sporterized stock is rubber, and it will not do the job that I'm wanting it to do. So I do not have one of these. I have that coming. And I will just have to sit here and wait for that. This right here is our uh, bolt disassembly tool. You got to stick your firing pin in there in order to disassemble your bolt. Um, there was a bullet that was lodged in here. It was an 8mm Mauser round. I have no idea what the story behind it is. Uh, that was probably done, hell, my lifetime times two ago. Okay, so looking at this thing, I guess I should go in this direction. Looking at this thing, you can actually see... 1938, if my camera will focus here. What good are you if you're not going to focus? God damn it. All right, I guess that's as good as we're getting. 1938, and up top, we got a 42. Kind of looks like a 32 on camera, but I assure you that's a 42 right there. 42, that is the Oberdorf. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly. Ober, Oberdorf? <laughs> Oberndorf? <laughs> It's some hilarious ass name, and it feels like whoever named that gave up halfway through naming it. Now, the rear sight actually has sight adjustments on both the rear side and the front side of the rifle, which is 
the rear side and the front side of the uh, uh, sight leaf here, which is something that the Germans very quickly gave up on during the war, as you can see from our mid-war production rifle right here. That does not have the elevation markings on the underside of the leaf side. It just has it on the, uh, the top side there, whereas our start of the war rifle has it on both sides. That is a very clear indication of what it is that we're actually dealing with here. Also, the front sight, originally these rifles were given uh, almost like a, a specific cover that you could stick over the barrel uh, in order to protect the front sight and protect the muzzle itself. So, pull up a chair here so I can actually sit down. So it was deemed that those are easily lost and fragile and the Germans just didn't feel like dealing with it. But before that decision was made, there was no cut uh, in the actual front sight peg right here in order to accept a uh, sight protector ring. Normally, there's supposed to be a sight protector ring over these things if they have that. And I can show that right here. This does not have a sight protector ring on it, but it does have the cut for one. If my camera will focus on that, please and thank you. Well, I guess that's as good as we're getting. You can very clearly see the cut right there. Oh, there we go. That's nice and focused. My God. You very clearly see the cut right there where you're able to slide over a sight protector hood uh, on the top of this thing. Your earlier pattern rifles or your or earlier war model rifles did not have that. So we have an early model barrel and receiver on this thing. And we have a mid-war model stock and upper handguard. I believe this is a mid-war model. I'm not positive about it, but I believe that the upper handguard is also a, uh, a laminate part as well. Now, I can definitely tell that this is not a late war model, simply because we have the, uh, the Mauser bolt disassembly tool in the actual buttstock itself, as opposed to way later in the war, whenever they just drilled it right into the butt plate itself. Um, besides that, we are missing our safety here, but the rifle still functions without it. That's not an essential, integral part of the Mauser system. Our bolt stop right here is from this rifle, and our magazine and trigger guard right there are from this rifle as well. I have some winter trigger guard and magazine stuff that should uh, fit onto this rifle right here so I can at least use it, but it would not look right on an original Car 98. That's why I took the bits from this rifle and stuck it onto this rifle. We have Model 98 lathered in rust. We have a serial number. It looks like 396. We have very barely visible, but a couple of waffenants right there. Uh, 396 right there. The bolt is not matching. That's why I would not have been against getting a new one uh, if I could not get this one saved. But <laughs> lo and behold, enough uh, brutal force and I was able to get this thing up and going. Alright, I almost forgot to show this off. This is the crack in the stock. Very barely noticeable, but definitely there. Um, I want to go ahead and get that taken care of before I do absolutely anything with the rifle. There's no cracks around the recoil lugs, which is one of the uh, main things that makes me say this stock is probably salvageable. Uh, like I said, I'm going to hydrate the wood and take care of the wood, and there's not really much of a finish left on it. Uh, this rifle was obviously very, very, <laughs> very brutally taken care of, but the bolt is functional. Uh, I'm not sure about the headspace. I'll have to check that before I go firing this rifle. And the barrel looks phenomenal, so this is definitely going to fire accurately. I'm hoping that I can break free our little uh, elevation sight thing here, because it is completely seized up and does not move. So I will lather that in some uh, various oils, and we will see uh, if I can get that broken free. Okay, now that we've taken a closer look at these rifles... <laughs> This Car 98 is absolutely lathered in a tremendous amount of rust. Um, I'm going to try and take that rust off and leave as much of the finish as possible, but like the entire rifle is coated in a tremendous amount of rust. I'm hoping that I can salvage uh, what, <laughs> what I can from the finish, but... The stock has no finish on it whatsoever at this point. I'm going to clean up the stock the best that I can. I don't want to refinish the stock, but I'm likely going to stick on some sort of wood oil, uh, not only to hydrate the wood, but I'm going to do that in order to uh, 
give it a little bit more of a sheen and a little bit more of a better look to it because this thing looks like it's been sitting in either the dirt or someone's shed or who the hell knows. Now that I have the bolt free, now that I have the barrel cleared, now that I have this thing assembled and I'm, I know what I'm looking at and it looks like this thing might actually pull through. I was a little worried with the crap that I found in the barrel because I was convinced that the barrel was going to be completely destroyed. I was going to have to replace it. I would have replaced it. This right here is a genuine uh, collector's rifle. This is something that I definitely would like to have uh, out at the range. I am forever going to be flabbergasted at the fact that I was able to break this bolt free. So now that I have shown off the rifle, I'm actually going to completely disassemble this thing, uh, soak it in oil for like a week, uh, let the rust uh, absorb as much of the oil as absolutely possible, and I am going to basically scrub off as much of the rust as I can, but I'm going to do it very delicately because I do not want to destroy the original finish on this thing. Uh, if it is even a little bit salvageable, then I will go ahead and salvage it. I'm also going to take care of that crack in the sock just because I really do not want to risk that crack getting any worse. For obvious reasons, this right here is, is an original Car 98 stock. You can tell from the style of lamination that is on it. I think that this thing is going to be uh, a good rifle. I think that once it is in shooting condition, and I mean, I probably could take it out and put rounds through it right now, but I want to finish cleaning the barrel. I want to get all the rust crap off of it. I want to fix the stock. I want to do all these other various things to it before I go outside and start pulling the trigger on it. So that's what I'm going to go do. I am absolutely astonished. I am absolutely astonished that this thing is, is in as good of a shape as it is, despite how bad of shape it looks like. So I will likely not put up this video until after I get this thing in such a condition that I feel comfortable firing it. So we're going to go ahead and pause right here, and then I'm going to disassemble this thing, and we're going to see what we're looking at. Okay. All right, now I've been over here playing with this thing for a little while now, and I've been watching Grand Them while I've been doing it, and I've gone through several episodes now, so I know it's been a little while. Um, now that I have this thing apart and I'm checking it out, uh, the crack in the stock, I think somebody's already tried repairing that before, because I cannot move that thing to save my life, and I have to open it in order to stick any kind of glue or adhesive in there, and I can't do it. So I think somebody has already tried to repair that. I've never had any issues with that, especially in laminated wood like this. Uh, this is not a part of this rifle. Move that over there. Our bolt. Our bolt was severely rusted, but it cleaned up very, very nicely. Firing pin is original to the bolt. It has the same serial number on the bolt, and the firing pin is in good uh, shape considering that it was bathing in rust. Our Mauser spring, very well tensioned. I'm pretty sure it's a 19 pound, but I could be wrong on that. I'm fairly certain it's original though. Uh, everything inside of this bolt looks, uh, actually looks pretty decent. I think that it's going to be uh, very, very, I, I, I was gonna say very salvageable, but I knew that it was already salvageable. But the rust, in the bolt uh, has gotten quite significant and we have quite a bit of pitting uh, in the bolt itself. So the bolt's not gonna look all that pretty and the more I scrub it, like, I have gotten quite a deal of rust off of this rifle, but now I'm beginning to wear on the finish. So I'm going to wait for the oil to soak in for a good while and maybe break up some of that rust, soak it for a while. The front nose cap, I've noticed it's not an H-bar, so it is original to the stock. But as you can see, there's still quite a bit of rust on this thing. It is definitely giving me some trouble. This right here is, uh, I'm going to let this soak for a good while because I don't want to risk scrubbing off all of the finish on this thing. Our barrel band turned out pretty good. Uh, there's still rust absolutely everywhere here. I'm still in the process of cleaning this thing. I'm not done. I'm just talking about uh, the progress I've made and how confident and comfortable I am 
check this thing out. I don't have all of the rust off of it yet, but my god, what a world of difference I have made so far. I don't want to do too much scrubbing on it because I don't want to start taking out the finish, but the finish in this thing it looks like it's still going to be salvageable. I can actually see very comfortably everything written on the receiver. That is amazing. I've still got some cleaning, still got some scrubbing, still got some, some things to do down here at the end of the barrel. This area at the end of the barrel, I'm not sure what the hell happened to it, but the nose cap and the end of this uh, muzzle right here, <laughs> really, really giving me some trouble getting the rust off. And I don't want to start taking out the finish. So I'm going to have to soften up that rust to make it a little bit easier to get out of there. But, but I think that this thing is gonna do us really, really well. It's gonna do us some justice. Our stock, I've lathered in just a very thin coat of oil, see if we could clean it up, and uh, it did clean up really, really well, and I feel like whenever it takes to the hydration from the oil, we're gonna have ourselves a very nice stock. I am concerned about this break in the back, though. I've never relied on somebody else's work, but I can't get in there. To, to fix it myself. So if it ends up breaking free or showing more wear, then I'll be able to get in there. But for right now, I might just have to let that one ride. And for what it's worth, it does seem extraordinarily stable. I could not get in there to save my life. I was afraid that I'd break the stock even more trying to do what I was doing. So I think that we're gonna be fine on that one. Bayonet lug up here did give me a little bit of trouble, but I got a vast majority of the rust off. Looks like I still need to touch up that nose cap a little bit. But like I said, this is still just a work in progress. I wanted to show this off uh, before I actually finished because I wanted to talk about the things I was able to do so far and the things that are giving me trouble. So far, this rifle's looking really, really good. I think she's gonna clean up phenomenally. And I've got this thing absolutely every square inch of this rifle lathered and soaked in oil. So what I'm likely gonna do is I'm gonna reassemble it and I'm going to just let that oil soak on the rifle for like a week. And then a week's time I'll disassemble it again and see if I can get a little bit more of this rust off. I don't wanna leave it disassembled because knowing me I'll lose parts and pieces. So that's why I'm gonna reassemble it. Not only that, but playing with the rifle is a great way to knock off a good amount of rust as well. And in all honesty, just with the way this is, I want to clean out the barrel just a little bit more. But hell, I think I think this thing might be worthy of being shot. There's just the tiniest bit of debris left in there, but man, man, that that barrel does look good. That barrel looks phenomenally good. Okay, now comes the fun part of putting this all back together. I'm gonna to go ahead and give everything one more wipe down, get off as much of the rusty oil as I can, and then back together she goes and I'll let her sit for a while. I think that this is as far in this video that I'm going to go. Actually, now I'm gonna put her back together and we're gonna take a look at her after she's back together. I want a, a before and after of this. Okay, well, just in the time, that I've invested into this rifle, which was probably about two hours worth. I still have a lot more scrubbing to do. This is definitely not the end result by any stretch of the imagination. It's not gonna look like new. I'm telling you that right now. We're gonna have pitting because we have some pretty serious rust on this rifle, but my God, did it clean up really, really well in just the short amount of time that I've stuck into this thing so far. I am absolutely astonished <laughs> beyond all reasonable doubt that this thing is is cleaning up the way that it is. My worry is the finish uh, on the actual metal. That's why I'm really trying to take my time with it. And the longer you let the rust soak in uh, whatever penetrating oil that you're trying to use, uh, the easier it'll be to break up and get off. That's why I want to let this sit for a while. So this right here will clean up. Uh, much better than it is, but it's already cleaned up really, really well. I am thoroughly impressed with this thing. Well, as of this time, there's only uh, one real thing left to do. I'm going to clean up the barrel, uh, the inside of the barrel, the rifling and whatnot, just a little bit more. 
And hell, I figure let's take it out and see if she fires. Um, I have not checked headspace in this yet. So we will have to look for any signs of headspace issues in this rifle whenever we go ahead and pull that trigger. I will be pulling it from a safe distance just in case we do end up having headspace problems in a ruptured case. This way I don't get any hot gas back in my face. But these old 98 Mausers, especially the uh, early war eras, the, the really, really finely made ones, uh, they typically don't have headspace problems. Not only that, but the rifling in the barrel tells me this thing has not been shot very much. So, if I had to make a bet, I'd say this was probably brought back from the war and stuck on the wall and never touched. Ever, ever, ever touched. Although the outside looked pretty rough, the inside uh, did look half decent. We don't have a safety on this thing, uh, but I don't think we're going to have any issues with the, uh, the rear of the bolt there wandering or walking or turning or whatever it is that the, the Mauser crowd is going to tell me it's going to do. So I'm going to go grab me a cleaning rod and try and clean out the barrel just a little bit more. Uh, probably season it with a little bit of oil and then we'll wander out and put, put a few rounds out of this thing for the first time in who the hell knows how long. Okay, well, on the walk out here, my earmuffs completely fell apart, so that might be an omen of this uh, being not such a good idea. I have... <laughs> Come on, you work with me here. I have fired some sketchy guns in my time, but this one, there's nothing telling me that this gun is dangerous to shoot, but it hasn't been shot yet. <laughs> so the barrel, I've finished cleaning it out. The barrel actually looks quite good. The lock work looks good. There's not a safety on it, so any hot gas from a ruptured cartridge would go right into my face. So that's a, a perk, it's a feature. So whenever I do shoot this thing, I'm gonna hold it away from my face for the first shot. This way, if it explodes or something like that, uh, hopefully I am uninjured, <laughs> fingers crossed. I'm firing corrosive ammunition through this thing, so I will have to clean it once I am done. But I have a couple rounds of full metal jacket. I'm gonna hold this thing like up and away from me whenever I shoot it, and I'm just gonna shoot it right into the dirt, and we're gonna take a look at the cartridge once it has been fired. There's nothing telling me that this rifle is unsafe to shoot. Uh, everything, everything about it seems good to go. Now, magazine, whatnot, like there's a lot of stuff on this rifle that is from my other car 98, but it's the lock work that I'm concerned about. I'm going to keep this very well away from my face. Okay, I decided to go grab my testing equipment. <laughs> just in case this thing does decide to explode on me. Now the Mauser action is nice and strong, but 8mm Mauser is no slouch. And uh, I'm fearful that maybe there's some debris or something still in the rifling, or some sort of factor I don't know about this rifle. I'm afraid that there is something that I might not know. But I did get it to chamber round. It's very tight. Uh, I imagine it's going to be hell getting that round out of there. So I have my hammer so I can knock that bolt open. Hopefully I don't break the extractor while doing so. But here we go. Get out of there, you. I reckon before I go sticking my face into this thing, I should uh, at least dust all the spiders out of it. Okay, here we go. Personal protective equipment. Hopefully it is enough. All right, this round chambered pretty good. Let's send it. Bye guys, <laughs> if this doesn't work out in my favor, fire it into the dirt. Well, she fired into the dirt successfully, and I still have all of my appendages. So we did not overpressure the rifle. Some stuff that maybe I missed in the rifling, although I cleaned that barrel very, very thoroughly. Uh, some stuff that was maybe in the rifling. I was fearful of maybe overpressurization. But let me wander over there, look at the hole, see if it looks like we had any tumbling or if it just looks like a regular hole. I don't really know what I was expecting uh, going to look at that hole, but we did fire our round. I'm not sure if it was tumbling or not. Let's see if I can open this. Oh, nope. She is very jammed up. That's what I have the hammer, hammer for. Give her the old clankety clank. 
and as expected the extractor did not pull the round i was kind of expecting that which is why i have this ramrod right here boy oh boy that round was very thoroughly crammed in there but we got it out all right so this is the first round that this thing has fired in who knows how long uh the rims tore up because the extractor uh done bounced off of it uh, I'm not surprised that this case was as stuck as it was. I don't see anything unusual with it. No splits, no deformations, but the chamber definitely needs to be cleared a little bit more because this was really stuck. Let's go ahead, and now that I know for a fact the rifling is uh, nice and clear, we'll pull the bolt off and we will have a look down the barrel and see what our story is. Oh man, that rifling is gorgeous. <laughs> My God. Yeah, oh yeah. There is not a single nick or anything in this barrel. I knew that the rifling was gonna be good, but I was afraid that the crap or whatever was in there may have caused some sort of deformation at one point or another. Now let's put the bolt back on. Bolt still seems functional. Uh, trigger feels like it reset properly and is holding its own. I'm gonna load another round, do the exact same thing. Let me see how easy this round chambers. Cause the last round that chambered, chambered very, very difficultly. Okay, it's getting easier to chamber around. That last one, I really had to I really had to go ham with. So I'm gonna put my protective equipment back on and we're gonna send another round into the dirt. That first round fired was definitely uh, nerve wracking, <laughs> but it did fire. Now we just gotta get the chamber cleaned and polished enough to be comfortable and cycle ammunition easily. Oh, this helmet's too small. All right, ladies and gentlemen, second verse, same as the first, send it around downrange into the dirt. Firing. Second round fired successfully. Aha, uh -huh. hold on. I actually opened it most way by hand. She's coming around, ladies and gents. Probably gonna have to give it another old tappy taparoo. I'm really hoping I don't break my extractor, but if I do, I do have spares. We once again did not extract the round. Let me see, where's my ramrod? Here she is. Let's see what this round looks like and how easily this one extracts in comparison to the other one. The bolt opened way easier this time than it did last time. All right. This round extracted significantly easier than the last one did. The case looks all right. I'm not noticing any strange deformations. A uh, little bit of rippling in it, and I imagine that is from various debris that we have uh, coming loose in the rifle as we fire it. Well, as of now, I think it's safe to say that the rifle is not going to fly apart upon firing. I'm going to go ahead and fire it from the shoulder, but I'm going to keep my face away from it because I'm not sure with the rippled of rippling of the brass if we're getting a tight ceiling. I'm not sure if I'm going to have hot gas uh, fly back into my face. So this is going to be a fun little experiment to see what happens with that. Oh yeah, she's chambering much easier now. Fantastic. So now I'm gonna keep my face nice and far away from this, but I'm gonna fire like this and see if I feel any of that hot gas uh, firing up out of the chamber. Firing. Nope, I didn't feel any hot gas. And we definitely sent around down range. All right, we again, did not extract our round, which is becoming a theme here, but the rounds are definitely getting easier to extract. Speaking of, let me grab my little extractor tool here. So we are definitely slowly getting better. The deformations on the case are also, we had some tiny, tiny rippling from earlier, but now we do not. All right, now, I'm gonna fire a round. I'm gonna aim at the steel. We're gonna see if we hit the steel. I am astonished. <laughs> that this thing is firing. All right, chamber is closed. I'm just gonna aim at the steel. Let's see if we hit it. 
This will be the last round we fire out of this rifle today. Now that I have everything broken up and loose, I'm going to go back and clean it again. But uh, this will probably be the end of this video. Assuming that this last shot doesn't kill me. And we made a hit on target. That means that the rifling is good to go. This, whenever I get it properly cleaned up and extracting appropriately, actually it feels like I might be able to extract this one by hand. Well, maybe not, but by God, is it close. Other than the deformations on the rim from the extractor, these cases look like they're really not in that bad of shape. I imagine that the several tens of thousands of PSI likely bro broke apart a lot of crap. Uh, I am glad to see that the rifling, we managed to make our hit on target. That is a really, really good sign. The sight is stuck at 200 yards, so I did aim a little bit lower, but we did make our hit. And by God, by God, I am happy about that. So I'm gonna do a little bit more fine tuning, a little bit more polishing. Uh, the inside of the barrel is now officially very, very cleared out, but the chamber still needs some work. Uh, the bullet casings are a little on the a little on the stiff side for extraction. The extractor can't quite pull them out. Uh, it's just, you know, tearing through the brass. Uh, that might break the extractor, so I'm probably gonna actually get an already broken extractor. <laughs> and I'm going to probably stick that on this rifle until I get that chamber taken care of. Uh, a lot of times whenever you fire these guns, the high PSI will knock out whatever dirt, debris, funk, et cetera, et cetera, that is in the rifle. I'm amazed that I managed to get this thing going uh, as easily as I did. Uh, I was definitely expecting it to be a way more difficult and lengthy process. I'm amazed. I'm 150 billion percent amazed at the fact that we made that hit on target. I was convinced that this thing was going to keyhole. With all the crap that I found in the barrel, I, 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 was, I was convinced I would have to replace it. But I didn't have to replace it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, not quite back to life, but God damn it, it's at least a Frankenstein. Uh, early war production, car 98. I don't see anything happening with any cracks. It was this morning that I oiled it, so the oil sat for several hours, probably a good eight. The wood is nice and hydrated, so I don't have to worry about any additional cracks showing up, at least not anytime soon, and especially not with the very minuscule amount of rounds that we put through there. I did use corrosive ammunition, so I will have to clean the rifle, but I was going to do that anyway because I want to get into that chamber. I want to figure out why the cases are sticking the way that they are. It's not terrible, but it's definitely there. They're sticking enough for the extractor to not be able to pull them out. The extractor is not weak. It's tearing through the brass, so the brass is definitely sticking. So I don't really know what else to say on this one other than the fact that I am very happy that this rifle actually came around and turned into something that I can very legitimately use, uh, especially whenever I get it running properly. I wonder how long it's been since this thing is fired. Uh, with what I was told, this rifle was... Uh, basically turned into a toy for some children, which is likely why the barrel was blocked, and I imagine it was a wall hanger. Uh, it obviously wasn't shot very much at all because the inside of the barrel is very, very, very clean, especially now that I have thoroughly cleaned it with some lead and copper. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure what the story uh, of this rifle is and where it came from, what it's seen, etc., etc. but I do know what it's going to see. I'm going to get a butt pad now that I know that the rifling is good and we make hits on target. Hopefully that wasn't just a fluke, but I'm going to see if I can break the rear sight leaf aperture free uh, so I can actually make changes uh, on elevation. Uh, I'm going to clean out the chamber and I'm going to clean up all the rust. I'm probably going to clean up the wood just a little bit more. All I did was clean off what was on it with some oil, but I do like the coloration of the wood. It's like a a dark redwood almost like look at this thing that is a gorgeous stock I can't get I can't get over that my god I saw that in the sunlight and I was I was thrown for a loop at just how nice it was anyway ladies and gentlemen uh, this video has gone on long enough so once I get the rifle up and going properly and running like you know the champion that it is uh, I will likely put up another video uh, down the road like a before and after kind of thing. Uh, I want to finish cleaning off all the rust too. 
Unfortunately, I am out of time for today, so that will be something that I handle later on down the road. That being said, thanks for watching, guys. I actually have several other gunsmith specials that I'll be bringing to the table for you guys to go ahead and check out. Uh, this one right here was definitely one of the worst cases that I've uh, had to bring back to life, but I did bring it back to life. Okay, well, that being said, <laughs> I fired four rounds out of this rifle. I brought it up from the dead. It's not quite cycling well, uh, but I'm still proud of the work that I have done so far. I love the way the stock looks. I, I love the way that everything looks. Anyway, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff, because I do this kind of stuff all the time. If you like the video, like the video. Uh, what else? In the description down below, there's a bunch of links to everything, including an email list. Uh, go ahead and check that out if you are interested. That is my just-in-case fallback plan. That being said, I am going to go soak in a hot tub. <laughs> so I'm going to go do that. You guys go off. Have a fantastic day. this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.